These stair treads are just temporary. We are actually leaving these here. And what you'll notice is when we framed these stringers, they're kept off of the frame of the wall by inch and a half. So there's a two by 12 running up along this wall and then the stringer is mounted to that. It allows the drywaller to run the drywall through the staircase without having to notch around every stair. We will have a trim piece that will be able to go also back behind here. It's gonna keep it nice and clean, give something solid for the carpet to go against. Yes, these are gonna be carpeted stairs. And same sort of thing, we don't have to notch, and you'll see we won't have to notch that. We'll be able to slide it right alongside of the stairs and just have to deal with the cuts at the top and the bottom to make it uh, die into our trim for our base going around. But first we're gonna go ahead and tear all these treads off. So the first thing I need to do is figure out where my base trim meets my skirt board. So what I'm gonna do is just take my square here and I'm gonna mark 11 and a quarter. It's the size of my skirt board. I'm gonna do that on the top and I don't know if I can get it on the bottom yet. Okay, so that is the angle of, or that is the location of our stair skirt. And now I know exactly where my base is gonna hit my stair skirt, right here. What I'm gonna do is take my digital angle finder here and we can find this angle. All right, so that's at 145. If I put this guy on my point, on my line, this guy should, in theory, be pretty good. Yeah. So now what I need to do is find all these measurements so I can cut this piece, which is out of a one by 12, and then I can get a dimension back to the wall from this point to cut this. And then we're gonna go ahead and pre-assemble this, get it glued, pocket hole screwed, so it's a nice solid connection and this doesn't have any waviness. Just because sometimes when you're installing, you get it where you think you want it, you go put a nail and then it'll move on you and there's no good way to clamp this. So we're gonna go ahead and get this all pre-assembled and screwed and glued. All right, so in order to figure out where this piece is coming up and getting cut, what I'm gonna do is just take my level. And you know, these are all making assumptions that everything was built off of a level plumb situation. If things are out of whack and all weird, like if this floor right here is not level, which it is, then these things don't work very good, uh, but, this is still, I think, the best way that I know how to do this is I'm just gonna go ahead and plumb this up and I'm gonna make a mark here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here and I'm gonna make a mark right there. And so what that will do is it allows me to go ahead and know exactly where to, this point is in relation to this line. Hopefully that makes some sense. I'm gonna go ahead and get this measured out and cut and hopefully it'll be correct. Measure twice, cut once. Oh, I'm, I'm nervous too, but you know what they say, preparation is key to success. You talking to me? No, I was just talking to myself, dude. Angle looks, unless you, oh, you gotta go way down yet. My angle and everything looks good, I'm just a little high, which could be the crown in that or debris or whatever. So I'm thinking that if we screw and glue this right here, that's gonna be money. Okay. All right, hold this where it is. So now let's go ahead and get this measurement here. All right, so what we did was we went ahead and cut ourselves out of the same piece the scrap, this return here. And the reason we did this miter here was so that when we come in, which is our first test fit, ooh, that's nice and tight. We've got a nice finished edge, no end grain. And then the goal is to run our base trim with a nice return piece with a nice little reveal, something like that. All right, so you can see here, this is our stair skirt. This is the bottom return that goes right along the face of the wall. And then this is our piece that has a miter for the top of the stair. And what we're gonna do is put some pocket hole screws 
biscuit joints. We're gonna get these all turned into one piece like you see this guy. This guy is getting set up for the other side. You guys have seen us do a lot of pocket hole screws so there's really nothing new here. But what I'm gonna do is make a mark in the middle for a biscuit. This thing does not do good dust collection. Well, it's because it gets clogged up in here. Look at that. Oh my. So now we have our pocket holes, our biscuit, um, biscuit joint holes? Bis biscuit pockets. Biscuit pockets? Hot pockets? Like hot, these are what we'll call them our hot pockets. Okay, uh -huh. I like it. All right, now we gotta flip this all over, get rid of this dust. Did you like that, Greg? I'm okay with the glue. Glue's cheap, having to do rework is not. All right, now that we've let these pieces set up, we can bring them in. And we should be able to put them right in place Obviously, once again, anytime you can do pre-assembled trims, you're going to save not only effort, but I think you're gonna get a better quality job, tighter, cleaner joints without the hassle. I don't wanna go crazy, but Kind of got to. Nice, dude. That that's pretty sweet. Yeah, right in there. I mean, that's exactly where, exactly what it shows. You're good down there. Yep. Let me uh, make sure I like this miter. You like that? Oh yeah, it's gonna be money. Let me go ahead and nail it. Dude, that, that is, that very much so makes me a happy man. Nice, right, so now that we have these skirts trims done, we can go ahead and put these treads on and then we'll work our way up. So typically, what I'll do is I'll screw in here but I don't know if I need to, but I might try. Nah, probably not with the... Just the middle one. Yeah. Just to add a little bit, if someone's running up the stair right here. It's gonna be carpeted, it's gonna be solid as crap anyway, but yeah. I just like it. Now, one thing we did do is with this, uh, this is all legacy subfloor. Uh, Greg went ahead and ran the router so that this edge is nice and smooth for carpet. Okay. Okay, well, that's the stairs. These will be ready for carpet now. Definitely solid. I like using the Legacy. You know, it's a premium subfloor, and, you know, if you used any sort of premium subfloor product, I think you'd get the same results. But, uh, Obviously we use a lot of the LP uh, structural products and that is great. So that's three quarter. We've got our minimum three quarter overhang, which you have to do. We rounded our edges and that will be now good for carpet. Nice and solid though. We'll let this glue dry. 
but we can move on to the next set of steps. All right, so I got the side skirts in. Obviously after doing the first two down on the bottom, these ones went a little bit easier. And we're gonna go ahead and get these last treads and risers in. And believe it or not, now that it's been a day, I wish you guys could hear and feel how solid these steps are. Doing the uh, steps with the subfloor like this, this product, it truly makes these stairs so solid. I don't think I'll ever frame with traditional two buys again unless I just, for some reason, can't get this. All right, well, look at that, dude. Stairs are done. Trim around the stairs are done. That's one of the probably hardest things that I had on my list of things that I was not looking forward to. And it turned out pretty decent. <sighs> nice. I like it. All right, the time has come. We are going to be installing this ceiling finally, and we're using galvanized. So I'm anxious to see what this turns out like. And obviously the OSB is ready to be covered up. We definitely can't wait to do that. Uh, and this will be a little bit of a unique look. So before we go ahead and get this up here and installed, give me your thoughts down below in the comments. Do you think that this is a good look or is it gonna be an interesting look? Personally, I was a little concerned until the trim started going up. Once the trim started going up, I started thinking, okay, this is possibly gonna look pretty cool, so now I'm excited. So let's get into this and start hanging this ceiling. So what Greg's doing right now, though, before we start hanging is we're actually marking this. So we got marks every six foot, and that's so we have nice, crisp, straight lines for our punch rows, or for our screw rows, and that's what we're gonna punch. You guys have seen us do that before. Nothing new there. 20 and a half. We're gonna be going six and three eighths. You got the middle pretty good? I'm good over on the right side, right? I'm watching the I'm watching this side. Okay. When you do a project like this, you've never done it before, you kind of struggle with how you're gonna do it. But once you get into a groove, you figure out, I don't think it'll be too bad but there's no way around it. These sheets are still heavy. This is a 26 gauge, 24 footers, and it's just gonna be a lot harder than when we have our mega deck. Oh no. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm in. Yeah, just push it my way. All right, so we got this first sheet in, it was a bear. Um, I forgot to hit the record button when we finally got it in, but basically it was just a lot of work to get it in around the J channels on this pipe boot and into the J channel on the wall, all while bending it down so that we could squeeze it between the two J's because it's an exact dimension. So this time we took a quarter inch off and now we just have to get in the top J, the bottom J. Should be easier. Okay, I'm ready, man. Wait. Yup. There, you 
good? Sure. Mm -hmm. It's a little slippery. Slippery. It seriously is a little slippery. Yeah, I, I didn't have that and it was sliding off the rail. Good? Yeah. All right. Hey. Your boy doing work. Your boy is going a little crazy there. <sighs> now that was actually way more comfortable. Frick me. Wait. Yeah, ready? I gotta take the nail. <laughs> okay, hold it. Hey man, it happens, you know? Well, don't worry, there'll be a third time too. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Okay, hold on, hold on, my arm. Oh man, cramped up. Now you come here and get on this. I'll just slide this over. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Let's freaking go, dude. One side down. Let's go ahead and uh, let's get the other side. What a picturesque. Let me take a picture real quick. <laughs> no, but look out there, dude. The Pulling lake. Your ass kicked. <laughs> well, I don't have to work. Wait, what are you complaining about? That was easy. Yeah, you're there. Exactly. Do you want me to grab you a coffee on my way? Let yeah. me take this picture first. This looks really nice. Look at the picture, dude. I can't see it because I'm busy holding up this sheet. Man, my my phone is like. Oh, Kyle. damn. <laughs> I'll go as fast as I can. You got it. I don't go down any faster. Uh, I'm only one call away. So as we move through the ceiling, you can see right there, Greg is marking for a vent, and all we'll do is put the steel right over top of it, we'll come back through, cut it, and get it exactly cut to the opening. So it's a lot easier than doing it on the ground, trying to get it exact. Um, we'll just hand snip it right in place. Yeah. Ready? Drop. Yep. Keep going, keep going. Okay. Nope. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. 96, 3, 8, 100 and a quarter. Let's go 32, 3 quarters, 36 and a half. It's looking good though, man. One way or the other, she'll be surprised. I hope it's a good surprise. Okay. the most consistent spring ever. Do you want to keep it? I think I just made one of the most perfect curly cues there is. It's consistent. It's beautiful. It's the thing of beauty. Greg told me to throw it away. It's garbage. Well, you're garbage, man.
Hey, look at that. Last piece is going up. Finally. After months and months, months of trying to figure out what we were going to be doing here, we finally have the ceiling about done. And a lot of people were asking on Instagram, so I'll tell you guys, the reason there's plywood up there, or OSB, is because originally we were going to do a wood ceiling and we needed something to attach to. So I probably would not have spent the time or money doing the OSB had I known we were going to be doing a steel ceiling. But uh, man, is it bright in here now. All right. Go ahead. Well, I don't know, but that's not good. What do you want me to do? And just keep it there. Maybe I can't be that bow, dude. I'm holding it tight in there. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it just, I think we just let ourselves slack a little bit. That was a little sketch. I got a little scared, but it's all good, dude. I always reach up in this hole with at least one finger to make sure that I can see if I can feel the edges so I know where to go. I can feel it right over there. Well, that feels really good to have done. The ceiling here in the great room is now complete. The electrician can cut all their lights in. We waited for those lights because now they can be cut in specifically right in between uh, the ribs where it's flat so that they sit nice and, um, you know, in plane. It was very smart today to bring the second lift in because it made our job so much easier. Like probably twice as fast as it was and half the effort that we went through to do this other side just because the up and down and the holding, it just, it was a pain. So glad to have this on. Greg says it's a little bit more echoey in here and I don't know if I agree or not. It is echoey because you have hard concrete, hard ceiling, no furnishing. Upstairs will be carpet. That will make a huge difference with the sound going up here. Uh, and once you have furnishings down here in this concrete floor, it's also going to sound way different. So I'm not concerned with the echo. I know I'm going to get asked about that. Um, yesterday, our interior doors showed up. So that's actually what we're going to do next. But for now, we're going to go ahead and end this video. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Let me know down below in the comments, do you guys like the galvanized ceiling? I think it fits this building quite well, better than I anticipated. The true test will be my client. They're gonna be here in about 30 minutes. Now obviously at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you guys think. I mean, I always love to hear your opinion, uh, but my client is what really matters to me at this point because we just got done doing all this work and I hope that it is uh, up to what they were expecting or hoping. So. Wish me luck. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you wanna to continue to follow along. If not, that's cool too. But hopefully this video earned a nice thumbs up and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.